What if I told you that 73% of successful entrepreneurs spend less than two hours a day on repetitive tasks? While most business owners are drowning in admin work, the smart ones have cracked the code to automation. In the next 15 minutes, I'm gonna show you the exact five tools that are running million dollar businesses behind the scenes. And more importantly, how each one can move the needle for your specific situation. By the end of the video, you're gonna be walking away with three things. Number one, the five essential automation tools used by top entrepreneurs. I'll break down the exact tools that the founders and solo business owners are using, and I'll show you how they automate the tasks like lead capture, client onboarding, scheduling, and follow-up so you can stop guessing and start using what actually works. Number two, I'll talk about when you should use each tool based on your business stage. Automation isn't a one size fits all. Whether you're just starting out or scaling fast, I'll show you how to choose the right tools for where you are right now so you're not wasting time or money. Number three, a simple framework to automate 80% of the admin in under two hours a week. You'll also learn a practical framework that helps you spot what you can automate first so you can reclaim your time and focus on the work that grows your business. Let's begin. We're gonna take a look at the five platforms right now that we could be using for automation along with a few notable tools along the way as well. So let's begin. Number one, Airtable. Two, Caspio. Three, Zoho. Four, QuickBase five knack and then we're going to be talking about a few others found in the market as well let's begin with airtable now airtable is a platform where you can create modern business applications to manage and automate your critical processes if you are just now hearing about airtable they first started with having an alternative for a database so instead of using something like smart suite excel Google Sheets, you could be using Airtable and then you could be using powerful automation to be able to do more things with your database. Now you can also create different interfaces and create business apps and we'll go along the way with the best use cases. But bottom line, if you're looking for an alternative for a database like Google Sheets, this allows you to be a lot more secure and be able to scale from there. Next, we're gonna be looking at Caspio. This is a platform where you can create custom business applications fast. This has been in the industry for more than 25 years, as you can see right here. And so really this has been in the space quite a bit and for people to be building out uh, different applications. Next, we're gonna be looking at Zoho. Zoho allows you to do a lot of different things. I would look at this almost like Lego blocks, there are so many things in the Zoho eco ecosystem. This is an ecosystem in itself, but you could use this for your operations in your business if you would like. Next up, we're going to be looking at QuickBase. This allows you to spend more time on work that matters. Here, you're going to be able to do quite a few things. You're going to be able to create powerful workflows. And this, is, this also allows you to have a large ecosystem as well. And we'll talk about some of the changes that has been made for Quick, QuickBase recently. And then we also have Knack. Now, this is a one unified platform to build, automate, and scale your operations with no code. You can also be very granular if you're going to be looking at the different permissions and really based on what you're trying to do for your business, you're going to be able to create the exact workflow or operations needed for your business. Next, we look at Zapier. This allows you to connect a lot of different applications together and create automations. And that's gonna be similar to Make. These would be very similar uh, and the bottom line I would say is if we're looking at something like this for Zapier or Make, the main difference than other platforms like Knack, Zapier is just going to be able to connect a lot of things, but it is not meant to have a database of itself, its own ecosystem. It's really meant to be the glue of different things. I will do one caveat. Zapier also has like Zapier tables, but that does not allow you to have anything near the uh, sophistication or 
the different things you could be doing, such as NAC or Airtable. So I would just like to say, yes, they do have Zapier tables, but they're highly limited. Make allows you to connect a lot of things just like Zapier. I would say the one standout that they just now released would be AI agents with Make as well. And then a notable platform as well would be paper form. This platform allows you to create forms and then do a lot of automations. Now, as we go through every platform and talk about the best use cases, what you could be doing this for, we're gonna be talking about this a little bit later, but something to consider, what am I using? What are you using right now? In the comment section down below, what kind of platforms are you using right now? Are you switching from maybe Zoho or you're thinking about switching from QuickBase? Maybe the pricing has changed and now you're thinking about switching or your business has just changed over time. Let us know in the comment section where you're beginning and what problem you're trying to solve. All right, now let's dive in with some of the best use cases for all of these different platforms now that we have an overview of what some of these platforms do. Let's start with Airtable. Airtable would be best if you're trying to create a lightweight database and you're looking to have a lot of different views or interfaces for your team or your business. So I would say if you're using this for internal use and you need a lightweight database, you could be using Airtable. Along with that, if you're creating some kind of no-code application and you're doing this for a limited amount of users, you could be using Airtable for sure. Let me know in the comment section down below what you're planning to do. Next, I would look at the different things that you can be doing with the platform. Are you trying to use their new features with AI? Are you trying to create portals? What are you trying to do? That would be Airtable. Next up, let's look at Caspio. If you are looking to have a database driven app, this would be a platform that you could be doing. Also too, if you're looking for reporting, this is a platform that you could be using. To note, if we're looking at Caspio, yes, this has been in the industry, but I would say because it's been around so long, the they just have a dated interface design. The UI UX is just a little bit dated and it's a little bit harder to customize the exact experience that you're looking for. It's very sturdy, it's not going to break, but to customize exactly what you're looking for, it does have a limitation. So again, it goes back to what are your goals? What are you trying to do? And then also too, what I would say is, if I'm looking at the platform and then what kind of industry I'm trying to use this for, and then I would look at the exact features if it matches what I'm trying to do. Again, throughout all of these, write down what you're looking for, and then that allows you to save time and energy than trying to sign up for all of them. Now, Zoho, this is a platform that allows you to customize and have a lot of things that you wanna do that you could accomplish this with Zoho. They just keep adding more and more products. They can connect all these things. I will say, because it can do so many things, I don't think it can do anything very well or proficiently. You can do a lot of things with Zoho. You can create a lot of things. You can connect things. I have not found one specific product or specific type of feature that Zoho has you know, put themselves above anyone else. But let me know in the comment section down below, are you using Zoho? Why do you enjoy it? Or if you're deciding to switch from Zoho and looking for other options, what are you looking for? What, what are some of the, the things that are holding you up? Now, if you look at products, again, you can look at all of the different, <laughs> the launches that they just have, all of the different things that they have with Zoho. It's got its own ecosystem. But when you're dealing with an ecosystem like this with Zoho, you can be locked in. If you're spread out and you're doing so many things such as accounting, uh, you're doing email here, you're having your CRM here, if you decide to go somewhere else, it's not going to be compatible perhaps to the level that you need it because you're going to be locked in into the ecosystem that Zoho provides. Something to consider. That's pros and cons. It's just like any other tool that you have. You have pros and cons. Zoho has a lot of different options, but you're going to be locked in to this ecosystem if you decide to go that route. That's That could be the case for you. 
Next up, we're going to be looking at QuickBase. Now, the thing about QuickBase is you can create really powerful workflows. So if you're trying to create something very specific for your business and you need a lot of power, QuickBase is there. Now, if I'm looking at QuickBase, there are a couple things that I might be looking at for the pricing. For example, if I'm looking at the team version, so we have personalized dashboards plus 13 plus report types. Okay, that starts at 35. We have workflow automation. Now, when you're going up for business, now we have a couple other things. We have HIPAA compliant at the business level. And then what I might look at is, again, what I'm going to be getting, what I need for my automations and everything like that. It's going to depend on what plan you are on. So that's just something to, to think about as you're scaling up right here. So again, this allows you to really be in the weeds of your business, what you're going to need. But just keep in mind, the pricing is going to change based on the functionality that you're going to need with your business. So again, what are you trying to do? What are you trying to accomplish? And then you can start looking at the solutions by the industry or the pro apps or looking at use case that aligns with your business needs and what you're trying to do. Next, we're going to be looking at NAC. Now, this is going to be one unified platform. You're going to be able to build, automate, and scale. And the thing that really stands out with NAC for me is, number one, the pricing and being able to do so much right here. Um, when we're looking at the starter, we see all of these things that you're going to be able to do with this platform. And if I'm going to be also needing to have a lot of people accessing this, either my internal team or I'm going to have a very specific user base, I get unlimited users on the starter plan right there. So if I'm going to be looking at other options and, you know, weighing the cost, knack, I mean, that's something that jumps out to me right there. If I'm going to be looking at unlimited users, unlimited tables, fields, and pages. In the comment section down below, let me know what you're trying to do. Also too, it starts with 20K database records for 19. Um, yeah, starting at 19. Interesting. Okay. So that's something that I would be considering for sure. Not only that, I could be tailoring the different operations of what I'm trying to do. So that workflow, all of those different things, I'd be looking at that. And we also have another NAC video on this channel. If you want to take a look at more, uh, the granular approach of what we've done with NAC and showing off the different permissions that you can be doing and other things, uh, let me know. There's going to be a link down below for those different videos, but that's something to consider as well. The other thing that I like about this would be the different use cases. And as I'm talking to the team, there are more and more ways that I could be using this. So reach out to the team, see how this could be used for your business as well. And when you're creating this, you can be using different portals across departments. You could be looking at the different permissions based on if they're going to be admin editors, the list goes on and on. Now, like I mentioned, there are a few other options. If we're looking at it, Zapier and Make, these are going to be more of the category if you're trying to connect things. But again, if you're going to be using something like Zapier or Make, you're going to have to consider the cost of using Zapier or Make, and then you're going to be needing another platform where it's going to have a database or housing the records and all of those things. You could be using something like NAC that allows you to not only have the automation and all of those integrations, but you're also going to be able to control the data and have that experience all with one platform like NAC. Also too, a notable uh, <laughs> platform I talk about quite a bit would be paper form. But again, it's not for everyone. If you're going to be using something just with forms and you're going to need some kind of automation, you could be using paper form. But if we need something with a database and being able to do a lot of uh, focus with business operations, I'd be looking at NAC or other options like that. Let me know in the comment section down below, based on reviewing some of these different platforms, what aligns with what you're trying to do. Now, 
Now that we've reviewed the different platforms, the different ones we could be using, let's talk about how we could automate 80% of your admin work. Now, how is this possible? Well, let's take a look at this process real quick to see how we could do this, okay? So we're gonna be going through this. It seems very simple, but this allows you to think about what you need for your business. Okay, so we talked about the first section a moment ago. What am I using? Okay, so what platform am I using right now? Are you using Excel, Google Sheets? What are you using? Airtable. Now, the next question you should be asking, what do you want to accomplish? Now, this is really important because as we reviewed all of these different platforms, it can be really overwhelming or paralyzing to think about, well, how am I going to decide on what platform I need? There's all these great demo videos. What do I need for myself? Well, when we're thinking about what you're trying to accomplish, we're going to have a simple framework to go step by step. Number one, we need to think about the inputs and then the output. The inputs can be the data, okay? So where, where is my data housed? Where does my data live right now? Do we need to compile it into one location? Do we have it in several different places? And then also too, to consider, we need to think about the outputs. What does the results look like from that data or all the things that we have over here? That allows us to then pick the right tool for what we're trying to do. And this might seem very simple, but a lot of people do not write down this format for you to then be able to select the right tool for the job. So let's go this go through this for yourself. What am I trying to accomplish? Are you trying to streamline your internal operations for a team? Maybe your marketing team, maybe it's uh, whatever. What is it? Also, too, what kind of business are you running? Are you in real estate? Are you in education? Are you in government? What's going on here? Also, too, the information that you have or the data, what does it have to be in a secure way? For example, HIPAA compliance. Are you in the healthcare space? Do you need to have some kind of encryption? All those things need to be considered to, can, to think about what platform would be good for you. The next point would be the outputs or the results what do results look like? And I want you to think about in a perfect scenario, what do you need to see? For example, maybe you need to have your data in one area and then you need to display the data to the different departments. Maybe people need to see graphs or need to know what's happening for weekly or monthly reports. That's something to consider. Then when you're starting to think about, okay, I need to have reports, dashboards, what do I need to do? This will inform your decision on the right kind of tool that you need for the job. This allows you to cut out more than 80% of the admin work. Once you figure this out, then you can streamline the, this approach to be able to not do all of that boring manual work that you feel overwhelmed in doing every single week, every single day. But this allows you to streamline all of those things put it on rails, automate it, and then focus on the important work in your business. In the comment section down below, let me know where are you? What kind of tool are you using right now? What are you using and what are you trying to accomplish? And if you like videos like this where we talk about the pros and cons of different platforms and you want us to do more comparisons, maybe Knack versus Airtable or Zoho, and we deep dive and show a comparison step-by-step -step of looking at different screens and what to look out for or different options for your business, let me know in the comment section down below. If you like these videos, make sure you like and subscribe. We do this every single week and I'll see you in the next video.